Seasonality is one of the most powerful tools you can use in order to predict the financial markets. In this video, I will tell you how to use it together with the correlation. As you can see, by default, you have three and five year seasonality, but of course you can add all the other seasonality and you can go until 30 year seasonality. In general, just to be clear with you, I never use more than 15 years seasonality because more than 15 years ago, markets were really different from, uh, from today, okay? Anyway, it's up to you. You can use everything you want and you can find a way to use the forecaster, no worries. What is the seasonality? Very simple. As you can see here, what does three, five, seven, 10, and 15 years means? Very simple. For example, in the three year seasonality, we take from uh, the chart of the S&P 500 from 1st of January until the end of December for the last three year. So in this case, we have 2024, 2023 and 2022. And we simply do the average of all this chart and we have an average, okay? So in this case, as you can see, it's always really nice to see this kind of chart because as you can see, even if you use the last three years in order to have an average of of what happened on the S&P 500, or you use a 15 years average, actually you can find the same trends during the years, okay? Try to imagine, probably you already know seasonality, but if not, it's very simple how to use this very nice tool. It's very simple because for example, on the S&P 500, as you can see, even if you use the last three year average or the last 10 years average, you can definitely say that starting from the end of January until the mid of March, you have a downward movement. You can say something similar, but opposite, for example, here, as you can see, using the last three year seasonalities, which is the average of the last three years or the last 10, 15 years, you can definitely say that you can find the same trend, for example, in a period, in a window period, which is between the very beginning of May and the very beginning of September, okay? And this is something amazing because when you do the average of a such long period of time and you can find the same trend both on the last three years and the last, last 15 years, it means that we have a seasonal pattern on a uh, index like the S&P 500. Just to be 100% clear, you can find this kind of trends on every financial instrument across the globe. Also on FX, also on stocks, also on everything. Many people think that this kind of trend, this kind of seasonality is all, uh, are only on the commodity. It's not true you can find seasonality on every instrument all across the globe, okay? So for example, in this case, we know that we have specific pattern during the years. And of course you can scroll down. Look, we can just close this specific highlight because as you saw, if you go directly on the chart, you can, ask to the forecaster terminal specific um, specific uh, statistics about a specific time frame a specific 
period of the year. But if you just scroll down the page without highlight any parts of the chart, you can find the average for a daily average. Let's go here and let's switch off 15 years so we don't get confused. For example, now we are in April. We are on the 29 of April. And here you have the statistic for this specific date. So for example, if you go back three years, only 50% of time, this specific day was a long day. If you go back five years, on average, in the last five years, the day 29 of April was long 75 percentage of time. In the last seven years, 80 percent. In the last 10 years, 57 percent. You can also find the, the weekly average. You can also find the monthly average. Okay. So, for example, what is very interesting, since we are approaching summer, talking about the S&P 500, in the last three, five, seven, and ten years, every July were a long period, were a long month. Okay, and this is an amazing statistics in order to understand if it's time or not to buy a specific time frame okay at the moment we are in april next month will be may may we can definitely say it's a bullish period for the s p 500 okay of course you can also highlight a specific period okay and you can have specific statistic for this specific period okay and for example here you can see that in this specific period in the last three five seven ten years you add 100 percent 80 percent 85 percent of time 80 percent of uh, um, bullish prices and you also have the average return. What is very interesting, for example, in this case, is that we have an average return which is very similar, even if we use only three years and we use 10 years. Okay. It means something really easy. In this specific time frame, in this specific period of time, we have a recurring pattern in prices for the S&P 500. What is very interesting, for example, is the correlation. At the moment, for example, we know that the current prices, which is the current year for the S&P 500, is very highly correlated only with the free year seasonality so for example in this case what we can see what we can do is only is something very easy we can switch off all the other seasonalities because we know thanks to the correlation that the current year is moving very similar 79 percent similar like the S&P 500 did on average in the last three years, okay? We can also add the last year and we can see that the current year is moving very, very similar like it did in the last year, 71%, and in the last three years on average, okay? This is an amazing information because, for example, if we highlight on the chart starting from today until the mid of July, we can definitely see what we can expect from the prices. 
because we know that today prices are moving exactly like they did in the last year and like they did in the last three years on average. And so we can definitely see what we can expect starting from today until the end of July, I think I said, yes, July, okay? And this is a very powerful tool because we know exactly thanks to the seasonalities and the different seasonalities, if a specific period of time is bullish or bearish, okay? So for example, we go here, we know that May, it's a very bullish month, but we can also see, and we can also be more specific, and we can say, okay, but we know in the past, the S&P 500 was very bullish in this specific period, but today we know that the S&P 500 is moving like it did in the last three years and in the last year. So we can be more specific in order to get um, statistics in order to try to guess what we can expect from the market. This video is an extract of an entire masterclass regarding investments and trading. You can find the entire free course here on YouTube. You can find the link in the description.